Hi, so in this video we are going to learn how to find the area of different geometric shapes. So here we are going to derive the formula for the area of a rectangle, square, parallelogram, trapezium, triangle and after that we will also derive formula of the area of a rhombus and a kite. And as you can see I have already drawn a grid. This is actually a grid of unit squares where each tiny square is of the length one unit and of the breadth one unit. So this grid will actually guide us and help us to find the length and breadth of the geometric shapes and it will also help us to find the area of those geometric shapes. If you remember area of any geometric shape is in square units, right? So that square unit is actually a square of unit dimensions that means it is actually the square of unit length and unit breadth so these tiny squares are actually the squares of unit length and unit breadth so if we can count how many such squares are there inside any geometric shape we will be able to find area of that geometric shape let's start with rectangle so if i draw a rectangle over here whose length is actually equal to 10 minus 2, 8 units and its breadth is equal to 6 minus 2, that is 4 units. So if we want to count the number of squares this rectangle has, what can we do? Yes, we can count the number of squares it has along the length. So this will be a row and then we can count how many such rows are there in this rectangle and if we multiply the number of squares in a row to the number of rows inside this we can get the area of this rectangle so we have total 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 squares along the length and we have total 1 2 3 and 4 such rows so we are actually going to have total 8 multiplied by 4 that is 32 such squares we can write the area of a rectangle is equal to length multiplied by breadth because here length tells us the number of unit squares along the length and breadth tells us the number of unit squares along the breadth and that will also tell us the number of rows which are along the length are there in the rectangle. So this is the formula for the area of the rectangle and if I make the length and breadth equal to side then this shape will get converted into a square. The square is actually a special case of rectangle where all its sides are equal length and breadth are equal so the area of the square can be written as side multiplied by side because length is equal to side and breadth is also equal to side and now let's talk about a parallelogram so this is a parallelogram where opposite sides are parallel this side is parallel to this side and they are equal also and this side is parallel to this side and these two sides are also equal and in a parallelogram this side is called base and then we have height of the parallelogram which is actually the length of the perpendicular drawn from one vertex of the base to the opposite side of the parallelogram. So from this vertex if I draw a perpendicular on this parallel side of the parallelogram this orange line is called the height of the parallelogram. Okay so how to find the area of this parallelogram? I am going to cut this parallelogram from here and I am going to paste it over here. It actually becomes a rectangle of length equal to base and breadth equal to the height of the parallelogram and now we already know the formula for the area of a rectangle so we can write the formula for the area of a parallelogram which actually is base multiplied by height and now let's try to find the formula for the area of a triangle suppose we want to find the area of this triangle where this is the base of the triangle and if I draw a perpendicular from the vertex which is exactly opposite to the base this will be known as the height of the triangle and how to find the area of this triangle I'm going to cut this triangle copy it and then flip it vertically flip it horizontally and join it over here and it gets converted into a parallelogram an area of that parallelogram will be equal to two such triangles so area of this triangle can be written as 1 by 2 the area of the parallelogram so that can be written as 1 by 2 base into height okay so now you can say whether it will be true for 
an obtuse angle triangle also. So let me make an obtuse angle triangle over here and let's see. So this is an obtuse angle triangle and this can also be converted into a parallelogram. So this is the copy of the triangle and let me flip it vertically and then horizontally and then if I join it, you get a parallelogram whose area is exactly the double of the area of the triangle. So from here also we can say the area of a triangle is half base multiplied by height. And now let's talk about the area of a trapezium. Trapezium is actually a quadrilateral who has at least one set of opposite sides parallel. So suppose these two sides are parallel and then if I make other two sides it is going to look like this. So this side is parallel to this side. So let me call them as parallel side 1 and parallel side 2. If two sides are parallel, that means the distance between them is always constant. That means if I draw a perpendicular from this point to the opposite side, which is parallel to this, this will be equal to the perpendicular drawn from this point to the opposite side. And for that matter, if I draw a perpendicular from this point to the extended length of this opposite side, so let me extend it. And now if I draw a perpendicular from this point to the extended part of that line, all these perpendiculars will measure the same. And now if I draw a diagonal for this trapezium, let this be the diagonal, then it gets divided into two triangles. Triangle 1 is this and this is triangle 2. So these are the two triangles who has these two parallel sides as their basis and both of them have the same height. So the area of the trapezium can be written as the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle and area of this blue triangle will be equal to 1 by 2. Base over here is PS1 parallel side 1 multiplied by the height of the trapezium plus the area of this gray triangle and for this gray triangle base will be PS2 and height will be this blue line which I have drawn from this point to this extended length of this PS2. It will be 1 by 2 PS2 which is the parallel side 2 multiplied by height. So you can write it like this or you can take this 1 by 2 common and this height also common and you can write it as 1 by 2 multiplied by height and inside the bracket you can write PS1 plus PS2. So that is what is the formula for the area of a trapezoid. It is 1 by 2 multiplied by height, the distance between the two parallel sides multiplied by the sum of the length of those two parallel sides of the trapezium. So this is the formula. Now let's discuss about the area of a rhombus. So this is the rhombus. It's a quadrilateral which has all the four sides equal and if I draw its diagonals, we know that they intersect each other at 90 degrees. That means this angle is 90 degrees. So if this angle is 90 degrees, all these angles, they are also 90 degrees. So again, we will use the formula of the area of a triangle and then we will try to find the area of this rhombus. So if I take this as the base, then the rhombus can actually be divided into two triangles. The upper one is one triangle and the lower one is another triangle. And the area of this rhombus will be equal to the sum of the areas of these two triangles. That means the sum of the area of this triangle and this triangle. And the area of this upper triangle will be 1 by 2 base multiplied by height. This if we call as diagonal 1 and let me call this as height 1. So the area of rhombus will be equal to 1 by 2 base is diagonal 1. Let me call it as d1 multiplied by the height 1 which is the height of the upper triangle and if I talk about the lower triangle its area will be again we have to take the base as diagonal 1 and height suppose we take as height 2 plus 1 by 2 diagonal 1 which is the base again multiplied by height 2. Let us take 1 by 2 multiplied by d1 common and inside the bracket I'll have height 1 plus height 2. So h1 plus h2 is actually the length of the longer diagonal or diagonal 2. So the area of the rhombus can be written as 1 by 2 multiplied by diagonal 1 multiplied by diagonal 2. 
and what about kite the area of kite is also same as the area of rhombus which is equal to 1 by 2 diagonal 1 multiplied by diagonal 2 and how it comes that we will discuss so let me erase this and now let me draw a kite what is a kite kite is actually a quadrilateral who has two sets of adjacent sides equal here this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side and here also if i draw diagonals like this and this these two diagonals intersect each other at 90 degrees that means this angle is 90 degrees so again this can be divided into two triangles upper triangle and the lower triangle both of them are isosceles triangles this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side the area of the kite can be written as the sum of the areas of these two triangles and the area of this triangle will be equal to half of base which is diagonal 1 multiplied by height plus half of diagonal 1 multiplied by the height of this inverted triangle yes again we can take 1 by 2 d1 common and height of this triangle plus height of this triangle will give you the diagonal 2 or the longer diagonal of the kite so the area of kite can also be written as 1 by 2 d1 into d2 where d1 is diagonal 1 and d2 is diagonal 2 so that's all for this video and in next video we will talk about the area and perimeter of circle for those videos keep watching mass smart and bye bye till then